having some silly shenanigans. We are. It's all good. We have returned from Colossal Con North. Yes, and once again, we went to the Kalahari and the Wisconsin Dells and did not get to enjoy the Kalahari. No, we did not. We have yet to ever go to the water park at the Wisconsin Dells Kalahari. I don't think we've done any of the fun stuff at the Wisconsin Dells Kalahari. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope, we have not. <laughs> no movies, no arcade. You know, one of these years when we go. I mean, probably not. Probably not. Let's be perfectly honest. It's been this many years that we have not done any actual Kalahari things at the Kalahari. Probably never going to happen because I have zero interest in the wave, the rave in the waves. Mm. So because it's too loud and it's too many people and I don't want to pay $40 for it. So and I just don't have a lot of interest in raves in general. So (laughs) I really don't need to be crammed into a wave pool with a bunch of drunk people and their Kalahari chalices. It's just not my thing. I feel like something like that at Prime, especially if they like let you go outside, would be way more fun. Yeah, like if it was outdoors, then I would be interested. But that room is the most echoey thing I've ever been in in my entire life. And I can only imagine the one at the Dells is the same as the one in (laughs) Prime. (laughs) So (laughs) I just, no, no thanks. No, thank you. But yeah, I mean, there was just no way. It was not going to happen. <laughs> I'm not that big of a fan of like water parks anyway. I like the one at Prime because we can go outside in the regular pool. But I'm not a big fan of water slides and that kind of stuff anyway. So it's not an appeal to me to go to the water park. Like, I wish you could opt out of paying for the resort fee because like I legit have no desire to go use it except to sit in the lazy river because that's literally the only thing I care about just the lazy river that's it you know (laughs) that's all I care about I would just sit in the lazy river a lot of times that also gets so crowded that you can't actually move in it anyway and you just get stuck well and I think the problem is is a lot of people try to rush the lazy river yes and it's like it's called a lazy river for a reason Uh uh-huh you're just supposed to be lazy. Therefore, it is not a race to see who can get around the Lacey River the fastest. No, it is not. So if everybody would just like put their feet up and relax a bit, it would not be that big of a deal to go on the Lazy River. But I feel like every time I go to a Kalahari during a con, which would mostly be prime, even when I went like way back in the day after they first moved there, like, yeah, no, people were like rushing and trying to like run through the lazy river and i'm like what are you doing you are defeating the purpose of said lazy river by running through the lazy river um that is not the purpose of this activity i mean in running in water is kind of a pain anyway but well, yeah also not the safest idea on the planet really i mean i guess if you have the inner tube underneath of you then you're not gonna like face plant on the concrete that's true <laughs> but that's true Yeah, no water park for us. We did not have time. (laughs) There is no time. There is no time. We'll we'll, we'll get to that here in a minute. We have a bunch of con news for you first, though. Yes. Because a ton of things happened in like the last four weeks. Yes. So we feel like we need to address them. Starting off with some bad news. So November 8th, um, Kevin Lillard passed away. For those of you who remember, he was the photographer from a fan's view, which a lot of us old school cosplayers kind of grew up with back in the day. You can check out his full gallery for all the conventions he attended on American Cosplay Paradise. He was just one of those convention staples and traveled to cons all over the country. He used to publish his photos in a bunch of different magazines like in America back when they used to put cosplayer photos from cons in. And, you know, he was very beloved by those of us that have been around for a while. So we actually got to see him a couple years ago at Dice Show, and I hadn't seen him in probably a decade at that point and was so excited. I was like, oh my God, it's Kevin. 
And then he took a selfie with us and posted it on Facebook. He's like, I haven't even got my badge yet. And look at these people who already know who I am. I was like, that's me. I know who you are. That's I love right. you. <laughs> so that's that's super sad. He took like all of our first cosplay photos, let's be honest. He did. Absolutely. Like back in the day, that's what you did. You waited patiently for fans view to load on AOL so you could see your photos after dial the convention. Dial up internet. Yes, with your dial up internet. I mean, he took the photo of Lotus War that ended up in Ann America. Yeah, Kevin, um, he was one of those people that you would you would seek out. He was such a nice person, too. He was he was good people and he was just a genuinely great guy. And it's it's a it's a huge loss for the community. And I still don't quite have the words to express how I'm feeling about it other than it's just very sad. And it's it's one of those staples that has been a constant in my life for so long that just thinking about it not being there is is kind of odd. Speaking of staples that have been in my life for a very long time. Wrong with the last couple weeks here. So uh, November 19th, Jason David Frank, the iconic green slash red slash white ranger, um, passed away. And it's very sad for all of his fans. If you remember, I think it was two seasons ago we were talking about, you know, Everybody was in love with red or green, so I was in love with green. I was very sad <laughs> when my con crimes episode topic was on JDF. So that's right. But if you or anyone that you know is struggling with mental health, um, there is a mental health crisis emergency line nine eight eight. Also, the suicide prevention hotline is one eight hundred two seven three talk. Or you can text to 741741. If you or anyone you know is having thoughts of self-harm, um, please reach out and and get the help that you need. We will also put those resources along with uh, resources from NAMI in the show notes. But now we can move on to some more exciting news. Yes. International cosplay contest. Because the Crown of Championship finals occurred in the last four weeks. Yes. Uh, so our U.S. representative was Pro from Pros and Cons Cosplay. This was a very different crown. So it was a merger of Euro Cosplay and the Crown Championship. So the costumes were not as larger than life as what you typically expect with a crown competition, which was kind of interesting. But they also kind of had to do like a semi-performance as well because the original contest required performance. So that was also interesting to see people try to like figure out, especially those that didn't have to do it for their preliminary. They kind of had to get something together. Yeah, well, and I think a good percentage of the competitors in this specific contest were actually carryovers from Euro cosplay. Mm -hmm. That's why I think you see a lot of those smaller costumes, because you have to be able to physically move in them. Exactly. And it's hard to move in a larger-than-life costume. Um, third place uh, was Poland, which was Obi-Kun Studios as Geralt of Rivia from The Witcher 3. Second place was Jack of All Trades, Vega, uh, from Latvia, as Sir Marshall from Guild Wars 2. And first place... Went to our friend Amazonian cosplay from the UK as Sansa Stark from the Game of Thrones. So you may remember that this was also Team Solo UK for ICL. So congrats, Amazonian, on winning the crown championships. If you have not looked at this dress, you need to. The embroidery alone is immaculate. Her armor is actually metal. This entire costume is absolutely absurd and you have to go look at it it's one of my favorite things that i've seen period just go just it's go just look just at gotta it go look at it the details are absolutely stunning absolutely so the international cosplay league preliminaries for the united states also occurred at yomacon so um our solar representative is circle creations as darth raven from star wars and the duo representatives are Royal Rose Cosplay and Libra Cos as Rin and Len Kagamin 
from Vocaloid. And they also did Cosplay World Masters, which is the competition that takes you to Portugal. And the representative for Cosplay World Masters is Meow Meow Cosplay, who cosplayed Bell Dandy from Oh My Goddess. Which just makes me so happy. Right? We threw it back. I loved watching this build go up anyway. And then when I found out that she was going to Yoma, I was very excited. So all the videos are on YouTube. So go find them. Yes. It's a good time. You can check out what everybody did. And while we were at Colossal Con North this weekend, Art to Play Before Christmas cosplay happened. That's right. Uh, which is another international cosplay contest. So third place went to Australia, which is Curly Cosplay, um, who was Christine Daye from The Phantom of the Opera. Number two, second place was Canada. So this was Doll of Doll Damage Cosplay as the Red Riding Hood Sorcerer from Sino Alice. And first place went to France, which is Sadie Moo Cosplay as Witch Lecromol from Hansel and Gretel. And that is another performance solo cosplay competition. I believe that one's 60-40. So. Yes, this one you become the representative through a portfolio review. It is juried through portfolio review. So you you find out if you go or not through a portfolio review, and then you have to do your performance after that. Along the same lines as the Poly Manga Global Easter cosplay. So we went to Colossal Con. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. In Wisconsin. Good old Wisconsin. Yes. It was a very familiar sight to go back to the Kalahari in Wisconsin. It was. And of course, you know, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. So we were running late. Eh. Of course. That's how it goes. It happens. So we started our day out on Friday with the cosplay meet and greet, which is something the Colossal started doing a couple years ago, where they have a room and you can apply to get a table. And it's usually like a four to six hour period um, where you are set up and you can sell things if you want to or not. So we set up one. For ours, we had games and prizes. People were really excited to meet Phil. Yes. <laughs> which <laughs> cracks me up. Everybody's really excited to meet Phil in person. People walk in like, oh my god, it's Phil! And we're like, oh, people are really excited about Phil. They didn't really care about us. No, they, they didn't really, really care about, about us at all. Though. Everybody just wanted to meet Phil. I think Phil's going to need his own like pictures so <laughs> we can have autographed pictures from Phil because... That would be amazing. Phil is, is apparently more... more popular than we are although we did have people ask us sign things and that was that's always throws us off (laughs) it was a little odd i'm like do i need to start carrying metallic sharpies around because that's kind of what that sounds like we might have to after this weekend with the amount of requests we got to sign things um which we welcome those requests we just for we forget that there are a lot more people that know us than we think especially with the podcast now yeah because I've also learned that more people know shit cosplayers say than lovey cosplay at this point. That is 100% true. Which is 100% true because we would talk to people that are like, I know you for some reason. It would be like shit cosplayers say. And then they're like, oh, okay. They're like, why do I recognize your voice? And we're like, do you listen to me on the internet radio? You listen to us on the internet. But we had games. We had tiny, tiny plastic cheeses. Yes. I still have a bunch of them left, so I guess I'll just have to hold them for our next Wisconsin convention. Seems appropriate. Because I have an entire box of them still. We do apologize to all the people we missed while emceeing the AMV contest. We did not realize that we were going to be gone during the most popular time. Because while Larare Cosplay was watching our table for us, I guess a bunch of people came to look for us. And we were emceeing. So we were not there. Oops. Oops. We did get to interview the masterminds behind the corn room, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you'll have to stay tuned for that. Um, providing Bonus I can content. The audio, we did it on the floor, so we'll see what happens. But I did interview the masterminds behind the corn room from Daisho Khan of Old. And so the, the thing that threw me off with this was uh, we returned from the AMV contest and it's over. Like we walk in the room and no one's in there anymore. And this was only three hours into the six hours you're supposed to be able to be in that room. Lorai Ray kind of looks at us and just goes, yeah, everybody kind of packed up and left. And I was like, oh, well, we were planning on being here for a little while, but I guess it's done. 
Yeah, there were a couple of people that were still sitting there, but the crowd had definitely thinned out and there was just only a couple tables still that had people at them. So we're like, well, I guess if everybody else is bouncing, we'll bounce too. Um, I do really like what they did with that room. So Friday they had the cosplay meet and greet. And I think they also did like a collectible card game swap at the same time. And then Saturday they had a craft fair in that room. So it was only craft fair tables. And then Sunday was like a flea market, which we had gone to the flea market at regular Colossal Con before, Mm -hmm. which I think they just put normally in like a panel room or something. Usually, yeah. But it was was nice to see that use of the space and how it changed throughout the weekend. Good job, Colossal North. (laughs) Um, But we did MC the AMV contest. So I've actually never gone to a full AMV contest before. I had like a really long time ago, but legit, all they did was play the videos so, like, the videos introduced themselves. There were no MCs. They just literally played the content. And then showed the... Like, it was basically just a big, et- long, edited video. And they just ran it. Well, anytime I've experienced AMVs at con before, it's always been either on, like, the internal TV channel that they have for the convention, or it'll be, like, as part of, like, an intermission show or, like, a seating show where they've got stuff going up on the screens while they're doing, like, seating during main stage or as, like, fluff for the cosplay contest intermission while the judges are still deliberating. Like, I've seen for that before, but I've never actually gone to, like, a full-blown at-the-con AMV contest presentation. It was a good time, though. Yeah, it was pretty neat. I hope they bring that back because that was, it was pretty cool. The winners will be up on the Colossal Con YouTube channel. Um, Unfortunately, we had to, we thought we had to run to another event because we thought we needed to run to our table to relieve Laura Irick cosplay so she could go judge the in character contest. So we forgot to take a picture of the list of the winners. So we don't have them as of right now, but we will update the show notes when we get them. But the categories were rhythm and transition parody for the plot and best in show so when we get that information we will update our show notes we thought we had to run somewhere and then it turned out we didn't because it had ended we get to eat and rest we did because i really needed a nap at that point so it was good to eat and rest because then we had the live show on friday as well yes absolutely friday was a lot because we also drove in on friday Yep. Which we may have neglected to mention <laughs> that we did not come in on Thursday. We drove in on Friday. True story. So we drove in on Friday and literally hit the ground running when we walked in the door. It was a day. But yep. <laughs> as per usual, Wisconsin is always a great audience. Our special category for this live show was Drunk O'Clock Kalahari Edition. Because there are so many, 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 many many drunk stories that have to do with colossal con there's chalices involved so <laughs> they are known as the party con it's it's a different vibe than a lot of other cons so it doesn't have that like you don't have a lot of younger kids running around because it is more of like a party adulty type atmosphere and prime's the same way like you'll get some teenagers in but most people don't bring their small kids no to colossal con in general so it's a bit of a different vibe, which is kind of nice to have that kind of variety as far as places that you want to patron. Like, I honestly don't know why they do 18 plus wristbands. They'd be better off doing under 18 wristbands. They'd probably need less of them. Yeah, but... I know that's not how it works. That's not how that but works. But like, legit, I don't think there were many people under the age of 18 at this con. Yeah. But that's what Colossal Con caters to. It caters to the adult generation of congoers that's kind of the vibe of the company they're known for the party and the older crowd atmosphere um so it was nice to have an 18 plus show at a place that had a relatively full room because there were enough people over the age of 18 to actually see the show we are like when we were in st louis when there weren't enough attendees and they were over babies. the age of 18 to even see the show because the Attendee pool was so young. <laughs> they were all bippies. Yeah. We've learned that we need to research the attendee age pool to decide whether or not we need to do the all ages show or the 18 plus show. 
Or both. I mean, whatever. We probably should start doing both shows, really. Because they are drastically different shows. So we probably should start doing both. So that our, the younger crowd, or just the crowd that doesn't want to stay up till 10 p.m. can also come see the show. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) You mean the people in our age group who want to, like, go to bed at a reasonable hour? Yeah, those people. Or, you know, if you're planning to, you know... Rave in the waves and but still want to come to a show. This might be the first time we've ever had a legit line after a live show. Yes. Like, not just like a couple people, like a legit line of people wanting to talk to us, get autographs, take selfies. It is really odd to just experience um, because, again, we don't think of ourselves in that fashion, but gonna have to start carrying the sharpies but this is really the first year that we've been at cons since the podcast started sure so i mean really c2e2 in 2021 would have really been the first con back since like the show actually like yeah so this is i mean we're less we're less than a year of running like our legit live show right in its new format. Yeah. So. Because that was the, I mean, Iowa was, Anime Iowa 2022 is the new format. Yep. Like the final, its final form happened at AI. For now. The show that we run now um, occurred there. So it's just, yeah, it's something where it's going to take us a while to get used to. A lot of people know who we are and we're just like, uh-huh. We probably haven't met them. They probably just know us from the podcast. So. You know, Wisconsin and, of course, our Minnesotans are also at this convention. So Wisconsin and Minnesota usually is a very supportive group. So thank you so much for um, everyone who came to the show and supported us. We really appreciate it. But speaking, Mm -hmm. before we move on to that, that. of of people that we do know, it was really nice to see conventional. Yes, it was. Jax was there. Yeah, so shout out to our friend from Conventional Podcast. Yeah, it was good to see you. We have not seen you in forever. Ages and ages. We can see a so. lot of people at this con we haven't seen in forever. Yes. It was like the like Daisho reunion con, basically. Um, All these people I could start we listing names, but then we would be here for another hour. We would be here for another hour, and the show notes would get mad at me for the amount of text in the show notes Too many tags. <laughs> because I guarantee you this is going to be another one where I can't actually like... Um, on Instagram, say what anyone was, and I'm going to have to put it in the photo. This is who this person is. This is who this person is, because Instagram's going to get very angry at me with the amount of ads yeah. for this episode. And then eventually our show note uh, program also gets mad, and I have too much text, and then I have to like mush things together. And yeah, it gets upset. I'm um, saying yes. spaghetti. <laughs> 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 But yes, we cosplayed at a con and we're like, what do we do now? <laughs> we didn't know what to do, frankly. Like, we we never cosplayed a con unless we, one, have a photo shoot or, two, have a competition and we had neither. I don't know how I, f- I still don't know how I feel about it. It was very odd. It was. So we did Hades and Dread Queen Persephone from Lore Olympus. I had somebody in the dealer's room told me I look divine, and I'm sitting here thinking, well, I am a goddess, so I guess that's the point. I mean, that's true. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, I mean, we got really good reception for them. It was just kind of like a, what am I supposed to do now? (laughs) I know, right? Like, we don't get to just cosplay for the sake of cosplaying anymore (laughs) at con. We forgot what you do when you just, like, so tell us in the comments on Instagram, what do you do when you just wear a costume to wear it at a con? Because we've forgotten how this works. Well, I think you're supposed to put the costume on and then just do all the normal things that you would be doing if you were not wearing a costume. Like, is that how that works? Because I really, like, don't know. I don't know. It's been too long. I know. It's been way too long. Just worn a costume around that wasn't for, like, the costume contest or a photo shoot or a meetup. <laughs> Or for judging, or for guesting, or... Or for working, or... Right, there's always a direct purpose for them, so... Well, then it was also one of those where I'm like, 
Well, we're going to end up putting these on the following weekend to do an actual photo shoot. So I guess it was good practice to make sure everything is like the way you want it. But yeah, I don't know. It was weird. But we also don't know how to just go to a con anymore either. We figured that out too. Yeah, that was, I feel like we've had that conversation several times over the, especially the last couple of years where we're like, we try to just go to a con and then we, it doesn't work that it way. It doesn't work out. Um, Cause I can't tell you the last time I just went to a con where I wasn't competing or working in some fashion. I mean, St. Louis was the closest and we were like, okay, what do we do? <laughs> But we competed and we did the live show. No, we don't know how to not do And those. we did a photo shoot off site. That's true. We don't know how to do these things anymore. Mwah. Mwah. So we were the MCs for the cosplay contest at Colossal Con North. As per usual, Wisconsin, you are an amazing crowd. Mwah. Mwah. And as per usual, Wisconsin knocked it out of the park. You usually bring it, and this contest did not disappoint. Um, one of the things that's very unique to Wisconsin is the contestants have an affinity for original design, um, and boy, did they get creative this year. And I don't know if it's one of those things where just like the community like loves it that much more, or because so many of their cons allow them that people just run with it because it's one of the few places that they can actually enter like an original design and just kind of go with it. <laughs> that could be it too, that it's just Wisconsin conventions are very open to having original designs. So then people take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Either way. But they either really, way. I mean, the original designs this year were, were pretty awesome. And we have always had a deep appreciation for the tech crew of Colossal Con. Um, but now it is just deepened by our never-ending friendship that we have developed with the tech crew at Colossal Con. So it is the same crew that does all the Colossal Cons. So these are the same guys that we worked with when we performed at Prime multiple years ago. It's been the same crew forever. But now we are friends. Now we're friends. And Mark owes us a beer. Mark does owe us a beer. Mark and Enda. Sound sound guy and light guy. Sound guy and light guy. Mark and Enda. We all got through the first year. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong because every first year has that. We now have that very special bond that happens in this kind of work. Um, Theater people know what I'm talking about. When you just, you bond together through all your trials and tribulations. Perseverance. Perseverance. Um, Yes. So now we have a special bond with the Colossal Contact crew that will never die. But Mark still is a severe. But Mark still is a severe. <laughs> they did give us hands-free mics, though, which was really nice. That was amazing. Mine was a little wonky. I don't know if I did something to it or what, because the, the hard part was these mics stayed live, and it was really loud backstage. So I kept feeling like I needed to either turn mine off or do something to it. And so there were times where I felt like it wasn't on. Um. But it was still really great to not have to worry about something in my hands. Absolutely. While I was well, doing things. At least once or twice, we ended up on the floor. So oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. At so least much once movement, or twice. So much range of movement when you don't have to have one of your hands glued to your mouth. Right. I didn't have to like worry about what this microphone was doing because they were attached to my face. Well, yours was attached to your face. Mine was attached to my lapel. Mine was attached to yes. my face. So you were a Broadway star and I was a motivational speaker. Yes. That's that's what was decided. That's what was decided. Can you give a motivational speech about craftsmanship? Sure. Yes. Don't let your dreams be don't dreams. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Or as the corn room uh, put it, don't let your memes be dreams. Just do it. Don't let your memes be dreams. Wah. Wah. Of course, with any first year, there were some technical issues, you know, organizational mishaps, things you would expect. Technical difficulties. You know, you expect these kind of things. The show must go on. The show's got to go on. I mean, it does. We have to give credit where credit's due. We need to bless the Oda Queens for giving us literally the best running gag we could have ever asked for. 
at a contest because they did a performance where the main character was Waluigi. So when they walked off the stage, we asked the audience to wah for them in applause, and then it just continued for the rest of the show. The rest of the show. I really thought they'd get tired of it. They didn't, so I just kept going. They did not get tired of it. It happened all night and on Sunday. Yes, it it continued to happen. Just, just walking around the hotel. We ah. we definitely got wad at a couple times on Sunday when we were leaving. Yes, I did not expect that to continue for the entire show. I was like, how many different ways can I wah so I can make this keep happening? Because I want this to go on for as long as humanly possible. Yes. 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 So so again, thank you, Sailor Sun Merv and the rest of the Oda Queens. For the Wah. for this for this beautiful gift, Wah. this beautiful gift that you gave us, Wah. good times. So our contest coordinator was Starfall Cosplay. So the same coordinator as Anime Milwaukee. We did do the intermission show that we did at Anime Iowa. So our lovely intermission helpers were Lollipop Chan Cosplay, BB Design Cosplay, Timeline Cosplay, and that's nice, dear. Poor Paimon. Paimon is emergency food. Paimon is emergency food. Paimon's emergency food. Once they post video, we'll post video of the intermission. But um, Paimon is emergency food. We needed to bring the Pocky to Waluigi. And wah! A village village of wah! Because of course, that's what the village said. Obviously. Yes. Instead of barking like dogs. Instead of dogs, we had um, a village of Waluigi's. Yep. <laughs> who were bringing the pucky to Waluigi. And then I got yelled at when I made a Christmas reference. Well, it's not Thanksgiving yet, so. <laughs> we used Christmas bells, and I went, Christmas time is here. And the audience yelled at me. No! They were so upset. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Okay, it's not here. It's not Christmas. It's not Christmas happening. time is okay, not here. It's not here. It's not here. Don't do it. I mean, it'll be here by the time this episode airs, but it's I mean, definitely not yes, here yet. It'll be after Thanksgiving and then Christmas is allowed. So it will be here by the time this airs, but it was obvi- apparently it was not here during Colossal Con. <laughs> it was not. It was not welcome. Your judges for this contest were Laughing Rat, Lorai Ray Cosplay, Undead Toasty and Aradia Tomb. Uh, we have not seen Undead Toasty in like years. Ages. Um, they since moved out to like Colorado, so like we haven't seen them in forever. And if that name sounds familiar, they were a guest in the first season of this podcast. That's right. They did the crossplay episodes with me. You have heard from them in the past. Those were your esteemed judges for this contest. So Laughing Rat and Undead Toasty did craftsmanship, and then Lorari Cosplay and Aradia Tomb did performance. So that's how they split it up for this contest. We have a lot of awards in true Wisconsin fashion. Because Wisconsin also likes a lot of awards. That's okay. But that's okay. So starting with our minor awards, um, we had best prop was Courtney Hurtman as Jester from Critical Role. The Dream Team Mashup Award went to Alex and James as Sailor Daisy and Tuxedo L. They were adorable. The Shining Star went to Rubesti Kaz as Hasune Miku from Vocaloid. So a Shining Star Award is like your up and coming award. Um, yes. So it's usually for a newer cosplayer who they wanted to be able to um, like highlight. Yeah, definitely a novice. Um, a lot of times it's first contest. I didn't get to hear the whole spiel for this particular version of Shining Star, but yes, that is what that is. I'm going to blame the name of this award on the fact that one of the performance judges is a fan of this podcast. Um, the If It Can Go Wrong Award went to Angel Von Cosplay as Kirby from Kirby's Dream Buffet. They had a little mishap on stage and they beautifully recovered. So that is where the If It Can Go Wrong comes from. So the Stab It Till It's Dead Award, which was embroidery based, um, but it is a super fun name, um, went to Safira as Lemuroir from Ace Attorney. And our Golden Fridge Award. Which apparently now it is just dubbed the Golden Fridge. So apparently we give out the Golden Fridge Award now. 
um, or gift, the golden fridge gift, um, essentially. A small gold refrigerator with cheese and rhinestones. So kind of like an AI where it was a little gold refrigerator. It was a gold refrigerator for Colossal Con. Yes. Now we just are going to give out golden fridges forever. Yes. Um, This went to Detective Cosplays as Paimon, also known as Emergency Food, from Genshin Impact. They were a wonderful sport because, of course, Paimon ended up one of the items (laughs) in the um, intermission show. We also talked about whether or not Paimon was emergency food with the audience after they went on stage, but they were, we felt it appropriate for emergency food to be given a fridge. (laughs) Seemed appropriate. So moving on to our novice craftsmanship category, third place went to Saphir Cosplay as Lamar, again from Ace Attorney. Second place novice went to Candy Cat Cosplay as Ocean Song Seraphine. Best novice went to Steam Powered Hippie as Rose Quartz. Moving on to our journeyman category, our third place journeyman went to Voye as Garu, which you might recognize that name from our Anime Milwaukee episode. Um, they did Chung Yun at Anime Milwaukee. This was Garu from New Carnival, not Genshin Impact. But by the character design, I could see why those would get mixed up. I 100% thought it was some Genshin Impact design that I hadn't seen before until I talked to them. Sure. I announced it correctly on stage, but then later I was like, is this like a, you know, like an event from Genshin that I don't know about? And they were like, no, 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 it's a different game. I was like, oh, well, I saw Garu and it's a character with like a tail and ears. And I just thought it was like the Genshin character, but from like a specific like side quest or whatever from Genshin. So... It is not. It's apparently a completely different game. But, well, because there's, it's, it's, I think it's Goro in <laughs> Genshin Impact. Oh, it might be, yeah. It's pronounced very similarly. similarly. yeah. And, I mean, they're both brunettes. Right. They look very wolf, similar. Wolf boys. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I totally get where that would come from. Journeyman, second place, went to C3 Cosplay and Awkward Lizzie Cosplay as Cinder and Salem from Ruby. Best Journeyman went to Sakura Sunset Cosplay as Dragonair. Uh, Moving on to our Masters category, in third place, we had Magi Cosplay as Shin Ching Cho and Lu Bing Ha from the Scum Villain Self-Saving System. Second place, Masters, went to BB Design Cosplay as Korra from The Legend of Korra. Best Masters went to Lollipop John Cosplay, who cosplayed from So I'm a Spider, So What? Which is like the cutest name for anime ever. It's a giant fluffy spider. <laughs> um, It's so cute. I just, I can't. <laughs> like, it's pink. It <laughs> like, is. It's fluffy and it's pink. And it's a it's spider. And it's pink. Like, I don't. I don't even know what else to say about it. So I'm a spider. So what? So what? It's so cute. Like, I hate spiders, but it's adorable. It's so cute. In the performance category, in third place, we had Candy Cat Cosplay as Ocean Song Seraphine. In second place performance, we had the Oda Queens with 1950s themed Mario Brothers characters called Fast Times at Mushroom High. What's their skit name? Wah! I'm Waluigi. <laughs> yup. Wah! Wah! Best performance went to Dimitri Darling as Belle from Belle. Our best in show went to Fira Cosplay and Echno for the Win Cosplay as Atlantean Spongebob and Atlantean Mr. Crab. These were amazing. <laughs> um, They were great. I saw them in the hallway when they were doing, like, either right before or right after they were getting judged. And I was like, oh, my God. The details are out of control. Yes. Yes, yes. Out of control. Like, the back piece actually opens. There's little tiny, like, nods to Spongebob all over these armor pieces. It's... It's wild. You have to go look at them. It's super wild. Again, you just need to go look at it. To go look at it. Please. If you have any questions about these awards, please contact the judges or the contest coordinator. As per usual, we are not involved and we will not have the answers to your questions. 
Wah, 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 wah. We have learned we need to start putting a disclaimer because people try to ask us questions about awards and we cannot answer them. So don't ask us. Ask the people who actually made the awards. We were on stage during deliberations, so we have no idea what was said. We have no clue. Also, per usual, use good etiquette if you choose to contact the coordinator or any of the judges about the awards or entries or feedback, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, be kind to your judges and your coordinator, please. So I know a lot of you want to know, so what was the contest like since this is a new convention to the Wisconsin area? Um, As expected, with any first year convention in general, there were organizational planning things that need to be changed. Um, Luckily, they're all things that can be fixed, you know, like tech blips, run through, where to put contestants, you know, before and after the show. Your basic normal things that you know, the hotel like throwing a fit about us being in a hallway they told us that we could be in. (laughs) I mean, the band showing up an hour early because they thought it ended at eight and it actually ended at nine, like small things that happen running over, starting late, which starting late and running over with how tight they had things scheduled at this convention was not good. Definitely a change that needs to happen is opening that house like 30 minutes before because the room filled up. But a full room takes a while to seat because they they really, this was tight. I mean, this, so skits were allowed to be four minutes long and the max cap on entries was 70. We had two hours. Mathematically, that is not possible. It's literally impossible. Like, it can't be done. Even if you started on time, you you couldn't do it. We had six skits. That's 24 minutes of content without on, off, introductions, etc. So we only ended up with 45 entries, but it was super tight. It was really tight. That is something they're going to have to look at if ColossalCon's only going to give them two hours, then they probably need to cap at like 50 and or lessen the amount of time you get for skits because that's definitely not enough time to run a contest with 70 entries where 20 of them could have been skits in true colossal con like fashion um and four minutes is just a really long time four minutes is a really long time and typically unnecessary so i mean that's where i would cut probably first is the length of performance that you're allowed to do so that you can fit things within the time frame that they're giving i would also probably get rid of the custom audio Same. So when you do have such a full masquerade, it's really hard to do custom audio because of the switching that has to happen between the audio. And if something blips, if something gets out of place, if the order gets mixed up, you're that's it. There's there's more problems that can occur, and yeah, that time. Because if they would have just played one like elevator track in the background the entire time, we could have just kept talking. And they could have just kept walking and gone on and done their poses. And as somebody was leaving the stage, somebody else could come up on the other side of the stage. But because everybody had custom audio, we had to start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Well, and when you have custom audio, your entries have a tendency to wait until they hear their audio rather than coming on stage. So they will wait. And it's like, no, you got to go. You got to go. We got to go. We don't have a lot of time here. We got to go. We got to go. Now, we would have been able to do 70 if they would have done that, like, revolving door like you see at a lot of conventions, and that would have been fine. Um, But yeah, I do not think with custom audio that having 70 entries is realistic. Well, and then the other thing that can help if you're on a time crunch is you do all your performances first, so you can dismiss your performance judges. So by the time the show is over, they know who's winning. Because ideally, your craftsmanship judges should also already know who's winning. And then your judging should take like 15, 20 minutes and they should be back on stage and we should be able to get out of here. Because hypothetically, if your performance judges are dismissed, you know, in the middle of the show, they will have picked their judges choice awards and their top performance awards before your craftsmanship judges get dismissed and they've already got their short list before they even go into the show to begin with. So all they have to do is pick their judge's choice and finalize it and then talk about bust and show. Now on the flip side though, this 
contest filled so much that there were people standing outside the doors watching it that they probably deserve more time. Because if you have an event that's that popular that you had to turn people away and they are standing outside the doors to watch it, it probably deserves more time. Kudos to Starfall because your show was very, very full to the point where it overflowed into the lobby outside the doors. Well, and I'm a sucker for cosplay contests, so I always feel like they deserve more time. Right? If, you're, if your show is that popular, you should probably, um, A, get a bigger room if possible, and B, extend the time frame. Well, I don't think there's a bigger room because that was main events. I know. I know there's not. They need to extend the time frame and then maybe stream it into another room so people can watch it. Yes. Because it was that popular. You know, as as a contest runner, like, it's... I do think it's important for the contestants to see the show, but then as an overall event runner, you don't want all those seats taken up for people who could come to see the show. So your best in between is to stream it into a green room space so that more attendees can watch the show. One Colossal Con tradition we'd like to see this one try, though, is the rehearsal in the morning. Please. Um, so Colossal Con traditionally does tech rehearsal in the morning, usually sometime between like 8 and 10 a.m., which is nice because then um, you are not trying to manage rehearsal while managing all the little things that happen right before a show. So it's, it's just done. It's over with. You don't have to worry about it. Tech has already figured out all the blips and boops that are going to happen. Things are already organized. Nobody has to worry about anything. and It's already done. And I know what you're all thinking, I don't want to be up at the crack of dawn on Saturday at a Colossal Con, but guess what? Being involved in contests requires sacrifices. Well, and you don't have to show up to rehearsal in costume, and I think that's the other thing that people don't get. So like every time we've gone to one of these rehearsals, we get up early, we go to the coffee shop and buy real coffee. And then go hang out until they let us in the room because we want to show up early. And then we just, you know, go in. We meet everybody. The performance judges are there. You've got at least one coordinator there. Your MCs are there and techs there. So you get to run your skit potentially multiple times with tech. Sometimes the lighting guys will get ideas from your skit and ask you about, you know, some constructive things they can do with the lighting in the room. You know, if they need to make any adjustments to the levels on your audio, like in their internal system, they can do that. If the acoustics and the room are weird, you can get that. You get a full feel of the space. But like we're showing up in like pajamas, leggings or yoga pants and just comfy clothes. Bring your set pieces and your props and go from there. Um, It's a really chill morning and you're just hanging out with the other performers The other really nice part about it is you actually get to use the feedback that the performance judges give you because you're not going to be able to use it five minutes before the show. So if they give you this feedback in the morning, you have time to think about it and make those changes before the show actually occurs that evening. which And potentially practice them. Exactly, which is a nice advantage to be able to have. Um, And yeah, you definitely get more out of the lighting guys if you have rehearsal in the morning where they can like play with, have more time to play with it and they're not as crunched. Um, So in in general, just doing in the morning, you're not as crunched. Like there's not as, you don't have to do it as quickly and it's not as like haphazard. So, and it's less stress. Yes. And we've, Colossal Con's the only contest we've ever done where they didn't do it right before, and it is 100% our preference to do it the way Colossal Con does it. Absolutely. Like, as contestants, that is our preference. We would much rather do it the way that they do it, where they do it in the morning, because then it's just over and done with, and I don't have to worry about it. It's Well, and that's that's also one of the reasons why any time that we've run our performance workshop at cons, we always do a Saturday morning. So for it's for both walk-ons or skits typically, but we always prefer to do it in the morning on Saturday so that, you know, everybody's fresh and, you know, can actually take all that time to absorb things like a sponge and be kind of like low stress because they're not like, oh my God, the contest is in an hour. Well, the reason they don't do it Friday evening is pretty obvious because you want access to main stage and you don't want main stage taken up during a prime time. So, yeah, you know, that's the reason you have to do it Saturday morning. 
And at most cons, there's not a whole lot going on in main stage at like eight o'clock. Not usually before noon is there really anything happening in main stage. So it's not very difficult time to, you know, get to be in there for a couple hours. Yeah, it's definitely a preference as a performer. It's definitely a preference as a runner and an MC to do it. So let's bring that tradition back. Do it in the morning. Do it in the morning. Yay. So special thanks again to Starfall for bringing us out to have lots of fun with Wisconsin again. Um, also, the full-time staff for Colossal Con is kind of amazing. My goodness. Can we give a shout out to the staff of the uh, staff food suite? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I was very nervous when they were like, no, we can take care of your food. We got gluten-free. And I'm like, what is it going to be? A bag of lettuce? Oh, no, no, no. Like legit food, like tacos and gluten free sandwiches. I've never eaten so well in a a staff suite ever. No, it was phenomenal. I've been staffing cons for over twenty years, and twenty years I've been staffing cons in one shape or another, and I've never eaten in a staff suite this nice. It was absolutely incredible. If we get the pleasure to work with colossal con again we're gonna have to bring them a present or something for how amazing they were at this con and making sure we could eat making sure i could eat like i didn't have to worry about food we didn't have to worry about trying to like hunt food down it was just like oh we can go to this room and then there's magically food here this is great but yes the full-time staff in general at colossal con is amazing you all are incredible special special thanks to victoria and mimi for having us at colossal con victoria is the con chair and mimi is the guest relations coordinator you guys worked some freaking magic this weekend and we really fully appreciate you yes absolutely thank you for having us um we had an excellent time if you would like to see us back at Colossal Con North, you need to let them know on the feedback form. Because they only want to have people that their attendees want to see. And we would go back, so let them know. If you would like to see us at another Colossal Con, you need to get a hold of their guest relations people. <laughs> and let them Tell know. Tell their people to call our people. Right? Which is us, because we are our people. We are our but... people. <laughs> No, it was good. It was a good time. It was a great time. Um, Pretty much everybody I interacted with was super helpful and professional, and it was just an overall really great experience. Um, The attendees in Wisconsin are fabulous. Can't say enough about it. So it was a great weekend. And that closes out our 2022 season. Ta-da! And now we have no plans. It's all up in the air. That's so weird. I know. It's really strange. I kind of like like it. (laughs) It's a little weird. We have nothing solidified. We're just kind of have ideas here and there. We're going to work on that soon because we do have to start making decisions on what we're submitting to um, and and where and and that kind of thing. But it is a little weird to like not really know. Like we don't really have plans right now. I kind of like it. I'm kind of okay with it. There's always been that like next thing for so long, especially, you know, if we if we consider ICL as a thing, there's always been that next thing for ages. So the fact that we just get like a small breather, even if it's not very long, where we just kind of can even just take like a week and not think about it before we jump back into it is kind of amazing. Yeah, it's it's something. I guess we'll see where it leads us. But again, I'm Ash. I'm Elle. We are Lavi Cosplay. And this is Shit Cosplayers Say. <laughs> You've been listening to Shit Cosplayers Say, an LVC production. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcast SCS. Our website is lavicosplay.com. Have a fun, crazy con or cosplay related story? Absurd cosplay question, or just something in general to share with us? Email us at podcastscs at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and remember, just because you can, doesn't mean you should.